Hey, everybody. My name is Joshua Palmatier, and I'm the founder of the small press called uh, Zombies Need Brains. And we publish uh, themed science fiction fantasy anthologies, and we fund them all with Kickstarters. Uh, so one of the main points today is uh, we want to talk with uh, not only one of our anchor authors, but also one of the Zombies Need Brains editors and uh, discuss uh, what's coming up with our newest Kickstarter. Uh, if you want to check the Kickstarter out, uh, just check out tinyurl.com slash znb2021. Okay, so again, that's uh, tinyurl.com slash znb2021, uh, where we are attempting to fund three new science fiction and fantasy themed anthologies. And uh, one of them is car called Noir, and that's the one we're going to discuss mostly today. It's uh, stories with, uh, you know, science fiction and fantasy based, but with a noir uh, atmosphere. So mysteries, detectives, private investigators, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, David is uh, not only an editor on Noir, he is uh, also going to write us a short story uh, for Noir, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but before that, let's have uh, David introduce himself, uh, give us your web pages and, you know, some of the novels that you have out uh, that people can grab at the moment and uh, all of that. Sure. So, hi, uh, my name is David B. Coe, and I also write as D.B. Jackson. Uh, I'm the author of some two dozen or more uh, fantasy novels. Uh, urban fantasy, epic fantasy, historical fantasy, some media tie-ins, uh, and I'm um, currently working on a supernatural thriller series. Um, for the purposes of Zombies Need Brains, I have been a co-editor with Joshua on uh, temporarily deactivated Galactic Stew and Derelict, uh, and this year uh, I'm going to be uh, co-editing with uh, John Zakor. And as Joshua said, it's, uh, the new anthology is called Noir. And I'm going to be writing a story as D.B. Jackson for that anthology uh, in the Thief Taker universe. And I'll be happy to talk about that. Um, I'm probably best known for the Thief Taker books and also for the Lon Tobin Chronicle, which was my first series from Tor way, way back in the 20th century. Um, <laughs> and uh, those books, uh, they won the Crawford Award. They got me started in my career. They were epic fantasies, big honking, big, thick, thick books that you could never publish today. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've done that. I've done Winds of the Forelands. Uh, I've done a series called The Case Files of Justice Fearson, which is my urban fantasy, and a few other things. So I've been around in this business for a while. Yes, I noticed you were you've uh, been a lot doing a lot of genre hopping, but uh, but yeah, it does seem like the thief taker ones are uh, the ones that seem most popular, um, or at least you have. It seems like you have the most out in that particular uh, universe. Um, at this point, I do. I have the most work out in that universe, and certainly, if you count all the short stories, I've done more than a dozen Thief Taker short stories. And on my, on the D.B. Jackson website, so I have a website for davidbco.com, um, but I also have a D.B. Jackson website, D.B. Jackson author, D.B. Jackson dash author.com. Um, and there's a page on that site uh, under the heading of short fiction that lists every Thief Taker novel and story in the order in which they occurred chronologically. So like if one set in 1760 as the first, the very first short story I wrote in that world, which I wrote for you, for Tales from the Urbar years and years ago, that's first. And then that goes all the way through to 1775. There's a story I wrote for uh, The Razor's Edge that was set in 1775. And so there's a, there's a chronology of the Thief Taker stories. But the Thief Taker story you wrote for um, the After Hours anthology, you had already had the Thief Taker books out at that point, right? No. Oh, so the thief, Genesis I, idea? So the very first Thief Taker themed thing that I ever published was that story. And I think that story came out in like 2011. I think it was 11, yeah. Yeah, the, thief, the first Thief Taker novel came out in 2012. 
Oh, but did you have, so you had the novel written though before you wrote the short story? Right, I had the novel written, but I hadn't, yeah, but I hadn't published anything. The very first Thief Taker thing I did, and the Thief Taker himself doesn't even appear in that story. Um, yeah. But it's set in his world. And that was that was for you and, and Patricia. Yeah, I didn't know that. I just assumed yeah. that, that story came out after the uh, novels had started. So, yeah. so that's very cool. I learned something new today. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So, so yes, you're going to write a short story for uh, for noir, and uh, you said that it, you intended to be a thief taker. Can you can you expand on that at all? Well, so the thief taker stories, the idea of them is each one takes place against the backdrop of some event leading up to the American Revolution. They're all set in pre-revolutionary Boston, and. Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't know yet uh, what this story will be about, but I imagine it will be set sometime in the late 1760s as Boston is being occupied uh, by uh, British troops. And so tension in the city is starting to ratchet up. Um, and what I usually do is I fix some mystery, whether it's a murder or a robbery or something else. Um, and I slot it into the historical events and tie it in so that historical figures show up in the stories, uh, Samuel Adams or Joseph Warren or some other important figure from, uh, from the, the pre-revolutionary era. And I'll, uh, I'll build a mystery around it. That's the idea anyway. Um, and as I say, I don't know yet, we're still months away from the deadline, but um, each time I've done one of these stories for a ZMB anthology, I've surprised myself with what I've come up with. And generally, I've really enjoyed writing the stories. And I, I hope that comes through in the story for my readers. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be, it'll be some historical thing with an with a invented crime inserted into it. I know I always look forward to reading them because uh, I believe I've edited all of the ones that you've done a thief taker story for. I don't think there's one that you've done thief taker that there's been other editors for. No, I don't think there is. I think you've done all of them. You and yeah. you know whether it's you and Patricia or you and uh, and and Sam or somebody. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so yeah, I always look forward to your thief taker stories. So um, however, it doesn't have to necessarily be a thief taker story. That's one one of the um, things I thought about when. Uh, when I was coming up with the ideas for the themes this year is that uh, you not only have your Thief Taker universe, but you have your Case Files of Justice Fearson you, that you mentioned earlier as an urban fantasy. So uh, any chance there'll be a story about that or? There is a, there's always a chance. I mean, who knows, right? I mean, if we could predict what our minds would do, <laughs> we'd, we'd have much happier careers. Um, so the, the Justice Fearson stories are contemporary urban fantasies. They're set in Phoenix, Arizona. They have a slightly different magic system. They are, re the, the books are really fun. I love, I loved writing them and I've written a few short stories in that universe. And yeah, I would consider doing something like that. As I, as I mentioned at some point to you, we'd have to change the, uh, <laughs> it would be a David B. Co. byline with a David B. Co. editing byline as well. So I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, but yeah, we'd, uh, I'd be happy to do one of those. Yeah, Zombies Need Brains doesn't really concern themselves too much about the, the editing and the bylines and all that kind of stuff. We, we just want good stories. <laughs> okay, what, seems whatever, like personal, whatever story personal nepotism to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, I know there's, when, when I started editing and stuff like that, I, I noticed that there was the stigma seemed to be the stigma attached to that. And I was just like, I, I don't know why. Um, so, you know, I own the company, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, your rules, your rules. <laughs> it's my, my rules. Uh, so yes, I would be happy with either one. Uh, looking forward to a Thief Taker story, but if it turns out that the, you know, Justice Pearson uh, comes up and whacks you on the head with a good idea, then uh, I'd be more than happy uh, with a Justice Pearson story as well. Cool, all right. <clears throat> Besides, uh, you know, editing for me and, and you know, suffering under my whip, um, <laughs> you also have managed to continue writing your other stuff. So I, I know you've got some Thief Taker uh, novellas coming out. 
Uh, and you also have a brand new project coming out. So why, why don't you talk about those a little bit? Sure. So the Thief Taker novellas, uh, there, are th there are three of them. They're a trilogy, and actually we're going to be putting together an, a printed omnibus of them later this year. Um, they are set in the aftermath of the Boston Massacre. And actually the Boston Massacre was the subject of the last Thief Taker full-length novel, which was called Dead Man's Reach. And so this continues, the, the Thief Taker story kind of picks up where the novels left off. Um, and they each novella, the, the first one is called The Witch's Storm, the second one is The Cloud Prison, and the third one is called The Adam's Gambit. Uh, and as I say, they take place during the aftermath of the Boston Massacre, actually at the time of the trial of the soldiers who fired during the, the, the Boston Massacre. Um, and uh, they were really fun to write. They introduced a new villain, uh, somebody new to be a nemesis for my hero. And they also introduced a new element in the magic that I hadn't explored before. Uh, and so they were, as I say, they were a lot of fun to play with. All three of them are out now and available in ebook format. Uh, and uh, they will be in a printed omnibus, hopefully before the end of the year. And then the, the big new project I'm working on is that supernatural thriller I mentioned. The book is called Radiance, uh, as in radiant, plural. Uh, and it's set in our world uh, with one very important but kind of uh, controlled supernatural element. Um, and they're thrillers. Uh, they're you know, good people in bad situations being, being hounded by bad people. Um, and uh, it was very different for me, uh, a, real, a real turn in, in my career and in the direction that I was writing, but I've had fun. The second one is already written and with my editor, uh, they're being brought out by Bellbridge Books and Radiance will be out in mid-October. I think the 15th of October is the drop date. And then uh, the second book, which is called Invasives, uh, I think that will be out either in late November or else they'll skip over and bring it out in January. This year? Uh, January of 2022, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah, a quick yeah. turnaround, but, but we, we got the bo both books written pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, so the first one's coming out in October this year, and then the second one may come out in November this year? Yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping that by the time the second one is out, I'll be well into the third novel and writing. Each one is a standalone, but certain characters recur. And, uh, and so people can start reading them in any order, but they, they work very nicely as a, as a sequence. Cool, that, that's fast. I wasn't expecting book two to be out that fast. Yeah. Um, I know I've tried to order, I can't remember if I succeeded or not, tried to pre-order uh, Radiance. Um, so I'll have to double check that when we're done here with the video to see whether I, I did it or, or whether it wasn't possible yet at the time. <laughs> it's possible now, the, the link is up now. now. Yep. Okay, my, my vague recollection is that I tried and it wasn't possible yet, so I'll have, I'll have to double check that. Um, <clears throat> what we should mention, uh, besides the Kickstarter again, is that if any of you guys are interested in any of uh, David's uh, books or D.B. Jackson's books, um, there are a ton of reward levels on the Kickstarter where you can get signed copies. Uh, so um, th this includes the Lon Tobin one, um, the Justice Fearson books, as, uh, and I believe we have um, at least the uh, anthology, or not anthology, the collection of short stories for The Thief Taker. I know we have that one. Yes, definitely. So The Thief Taker is available on there. Um, so if, you, if you've uh, fallen behind on your David Coe or D.B. Jackson, or you uh, are missing something, um, you can help the Kickstarter uh, by selecting one of those reward levels with the uh, signed copies. Um, and I think we also have the, uh, the tie-in novel you did, the Nightfall uh, tie-in novel as well. Right, right, yeah. Uh, Nightfall was a short-lived series on the History Channel about the Knights Templar. And I wrote a tie-in novel for that. It was actually, I've done tie-in work before and didn't enjoy it, but this novel was fun to write and they gave me a lot of creative freedom. And uh, I thought the story came out really well. I wish the series had done better because uh, <laughs> it was basically canceled pretty much right after my book came out. So, so, so I killed Nightfall. <laughs> uh, I was just gonna say, no, no correlation there. Uh <laughs> 
Well, if you're missing Nightfall, then that is also available as a reward level on the Kickstarter. Uh, so uh, I want to thank David for being here. Um, but if you are interested in uh, the Noir Anthology or any of the other two, uh, again, the Kickstarter is at tinyurl.com slash znb2021. Uh, so check that out. Um, check out all of David's and D.B. Jackson's reward levels. You know, pick one of those and uh, help us bring uh, these three new anthologies to life so that David can write his new uh, Thief Taker short story. <laughs> and so that the people out there who are writers have new markets to submit to. Exactly. Right? I was going to bring that up too. The, uh, we do a yep. call for all of our anthologies. So uh, including Noir and uh, David would love to read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of stories submitted for the Noir anthology. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, if we get funded, when we get funded, uh, as soon as we're funded, uh, we start that open call. So uh, for all you writers out there, make sure uh, you pay attention to the Kickstarter and uh, help us get it funded and uh, then send in uh, whatever stories you can come up with that fit our themes. Um, and we'll probably be doing a, a little video where we talk about what we're looking for and all that kind of stuff uh, later on when we get closer to actually being funded. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, in the meantime, uh, thank you, uh, David, for stopping by and chatting a little bit about your story and, uh, and your books. And uh, hopefully uh, we will be uh, talking soon about uh, the open call and the Kickstarter being funded soon. Thanks for having me, Josh. It's good to see you. Catch everybody later. Check out that Kickstarter. Back us. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the slush pile if you're a writer.